Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk heavyweight boxing. Let's talk about the big fight that's coming up. Let's also mention someone else who has analyzed the fight and his take, excellent YouTuber. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> now, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to boxing and when it comes to betting, you know, I'm really more interested in hearing a breakdown of styles than I am seeing celebrity interviews, right? Um, I know mainstream media does a great job of getting fighters uh, of talking to fighters about their brands and what they want to do with their careers and stuff like that. That's all fine and dandy. But to me, the best place, for me personally, to find out about a fight, to hear about different styles, is on YouTube. Right? The boxing community on YouTube, as far as I'm concerned, is outstanding. And one of the absolute best on YouTube <clears throat> is a guy named Rummy, R-U-M-M-Y. And he has a fight series called Rummy's Corner, where he'll show you actual films of the fighters. And he'll talk about his opinions on what they're doing, or at least what they're trying to do. And he has broken down the Anthony Joshua Alexander Usyk fight, right? And he has films of AJ against people like Kubrat Pulev, Andy Ruiz, Vladimir Klitschko, right? He also will tell you things like, you know, Usyk is a slow starter in fights. He has films of Usyk against Witherspoon, of Usyk against Derek Chisora. Now, Rummy is someone I've admired for a long time. His videos are very informative, right? And let me just say, Rummy and I disagree on this fight. He sees the fight going the distance, and he sees Anthony Joshua winning a competitive decision. <clears throat> okay, maybe Rummy is right. That's not the way I see the fight, right? For me, AJ only has a puncher's chance. In other words, A.J. hits hard with both hands. He's a gifted puncher. Usyk's history is at cruiserweight. By the way, he also has clips of Usyk against Joe Joyce. <clears throat> you know, it's possible that Usyk has never been hit as hard in his career as he will be hit by Anthony Joshua, assuming Joshua is able to hit him flush, right? So as far as I'm concerned, this fight comes down to, does Joshua catch Usyk? If the answer is yes, he wins by stoppage. If the answer is no, he gets undressed, possibly stopped in the second half of the fight. That's how I see it. But what's interesting <clears throat> is Rummy makes the statement that he thinks that Usyk is AJ's toughest opponent since Vladimir Klitschko. Now, if that statement is true, right, if it's true, then for gamblers like you and me, there is simply no way on God's green earth that Klitschko, excuse me, that AJ, sometimes I confuse the two, that AJ should be going off at a greater than two to one favorite. In other words, folks, people who look at film, who break down film, understand this is a highly competitive match. We can disagree on the outcome. But let's all agree 
that the idea that Joshua beats Usyk two out of three times is simply ridiculous. If you're looking for the value side of the play, <clears throat> the value side is clearly the Usyk side. Let me also say this. Let's shake up the conversation a little bit. You know, they show you AJ, and you notice AJ's gifts. AJ has some punches that you know are dynamic. Right? I encourage people to look at, I believe it's the fifth round against Vladimir Klitschko. AJ hurts Klitschko, knocks him down. When Klitschko gets off the canvas, I believe that when a fighter is hurt, you'll find out the opponent's best punch because that opponent understands that they're one punch away from ending it. So you'll notice Vladimir Klitschko gets off the canvas. Folks, it's one of the more important rounds of this boxing generation. Klitschko goes down early, gets off the canvas. Anthony Joshua comes in and is trying to hit him with a left hook. Now I want you to think about that left hook. <clears throat> it's very important, right? That's the power shot that Joshua can throw with regularity without a tell. In other words, Joshua <clears throat> doesn't have to jab you, doesn't have to set it up, doesn't even have to have his balance right. He can flash that left hook. It's the punch he believes in. His right hand's more complicated. You see it in the Kubrat Pulev fight where he knocks Pulev down. It's a great knockdown off a very tight, straight right hand. Right? Joshua has an excellent straight right hand, but it needs a setup. So you'll notice it's a one two on Pulev. In other words, Joshua has to touch him with the jab first to get the balance right. He needs to get his balance right to then throw the very straight, and it's straighter than most, right hand. Right? He has a great straight right hand. I believe Joshua's talented. <clears throat> I'm not here saying he's not talented. <clears throat> But just understand that those are his two best punches. He has a third, an uppercut. But that uppercut is rare, right? The clouds have to part. The sun has to start shining. It can't be muddy. It can't be a rainy day. Everything has to work perfectly for Joshua to throw that uppercut. This is not Carl Froch, who could be in a rough and tumble exchange and then lean his shoulder and get the uppercut off. This is not that guy. This is a guy who there's a lull in the action. He's leaning on Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Klitschko doesn't have an arm bar, isn't aware that Joshua can push him off with a shoulder, and then come with the uppercut. Right? Joshua has Pulev badly hurt. <clears throat> right? Pulev can barely defend himself. That's when Joshua's able to step right into the pocket and throw the uppercut. Right? Joshua can't do that if an opponent's 100% and moving. Let me also say, too, that we focus a lot in boxing on compu stats, right? Compu box numbers. We'll say, oh, how many punches did this guy land and stuff like that. That's only part of the game. 
a huge part of the game is movement and positioning. Now a technician, someone who's fluid, and his fluidity advantage jumps off the page every time Rummy switches from showing you Anthony Joshua, who is methodical, right? And then switches over to Usyk. Suddenly you're going from a good dancer to Fred Astaire, right? Usyk's fluid. Just to understand, a guy like Usyk is using that fluidity to take away the other fighter's tools before he even throws them. Also, get the dynamic here. This isn't Vladimir Klitschko. This is a southpaw now. So, since I believe Joshua has a tell on that straight right hand, since I believe Joshua isn't a combination puncher. I'm expecting Usyk to take away Joshua's right hand because Usyk is going to have a warning before that right hand is thrown. In other words, Usyk is going to be over on Joshua's left side. The punch he has to worry about is Joshua's left hook. Right, so Usyk, who Rummy tells you correctly, is known to be a slow starter, is taking his time figuring out the angles. Think about the Tony Bellew fight. Tony's best moments are early in that fight. Then once Usyk takes over, it's a tsunami. Right, I believe Usyk is going to be too far away for Joshua to throw the uppercut. I believe Usyk is going to know not to be right in front of Joshua. Usyk uses a lot of lateral movement. Just contrast his lateral movement with Kubrat Pulev's lack of lateral movement and Andy Ruiz's lack of lateral movement. Understand, too, I know many of you have said didn't Joshua show you against Andy Ruiz in the rematch that he could fight on his back foot? Now, what I want people to do is to consider the fact that Andy Ruiz comes into that second fight looking like he's hardly trained. Right? Blown opportunity by Andy. Right? Andy's out of shape going into that second fight. Joshua is on the move. Did Joshua have the same power? The answer is no. An out of shape Andy Ruiz goes 12 rounds with Anthony Joshua. I want you to look at those highlights too. Andy Ruiz is not a mover. In my opinion, he still has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. Ruiz is faster than Usyk. But Andy can't move. If he could, he'd rule the world. So here is Andy without lateral movement. Out of shape. And he's going 12 rounds against Anthony Joshua, right? I need to have people consider that when I'm hearing that Usyk, who's much more elusive than Anthony, jo than, uh, excuse me, well, than Anthony Joshua, but he's also much more elusive than Andy Ruiz. I need to have people consider the fact that Andy Ruiz in that second fight's a potted plant and he goes 12 rounds with Anthony Joshua. Folks, if Joshua gets on the move, his power's going to drop. Also, think about it. If you're not a fighter accustomed to fighting on the move, 
Do you really think you can jump in the ring with a mover like Usyk and outbox him? Folks, if a boxing match breaks out and not a fight, Joshua's going to lose this by four or five rounds. And you know I feel Joshua's entering the fight with a two-round advantage. Right? If a boxing match breaks out, Joshua's at risk of having this look like the first Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight. So understand what I think is going to happen here, just mechanically. I believe the Southpaw is going to be living on Joshua's left side, just like he did against Marat Gassiev. Right, folks, I know Usyk isn't a guy who's jumping around like Ali. But folks, I just want you to look at the movement. Just see him move around the ring. Right, he's going to be over on Joshua's left side. He's going to be smothering that left hook. This fight might become in another fight where a left hook was smothered. Bernard Hopkins's masterpiece over Felix Trinidad. So Joshua unable to land the right hand because Usyk's not going to be right in front of him. Usyk's not going to be stationary like Kubrat Pulev was. Usyk is not going to allow a long-term reliable pocket to form. Right? Usyk has a lot of Demetrius Andre in him. You're not going to see a clear pocket like you did for the Pulev fight. Rather, Usyk's going to be moving. He's going to be circling away from Joshua's right hand. The one I believe has a tell. So the question for me is, is Joshua even going to be able to come forward? I know he's bigger. I know he's bigger. I believe we all know that if Joshua gets on his back foot, he's going to be badly outboxed. Right? I understand the mainstream press disagrees with me. That's all good. If I'm betting my money and not the mainstream press's money, I'm going to go with my view. Right? As I like to say here, one of the most important things I have learned in life is to think for yourself. Right, folks? You're going to have a moving pocket. You're going to have Joshua fighting for the first time in several fights against the guy who can move, right? That wasn't Pulev, that wasn't Ruiz. Folks, those are Joshua's last three fights. You also know Joshua is susceptible to hand speed. You know that off the first Andy Ruiz fight, right? You don't know if Joshua can stay in the pocket against hand speed because he's on the move the entire second Andy Ruiz fight. Right? You also know that Joshua, let's think about his handlers for a second. Joshua wants to fight guys like Big Baby, Jarrell Miller. That's who he was signed to fight before Miller famously failed a drug test. Joshua wants guys who are going to come at him. Here he's fighting a guy who's going to circle him, who's faster, who's more fluid, worse yet, who's a southpaw. So I know many of you are saying that the Gassiev fight is a poor analog because Gassiev just isn't as physically blessed 
as Anthony Joshua. Gassiev just isn't as big, just doesn't hit as hard as Anthony Joshua. Right, folks, do you feel that Joshua is going to be able to even move forward? Understand, skillful fighters will take away your ability to be yourself. It's going to look like Joshua is having an off night. Folks, Murat Gassiev, the guy who gets you up on the ropes, couldn't even come forward against Usyk. Usyk's moving. Right? The people backing Joshua, who seem to believe that he's inherently superior to Derek Chisora, right, don't seem to realize that Derek Chisora is hyper-aggressive. He's practically running forward at the opening bell. That's not Joshua. Right? If Joshua tries to get outside his comfort level, if he decides he's going to try to be somebody else against a former undisputed cruiserweight champion who, like Joshua, won a gold medal at the 2012 Summer Olympics, and who has fought more luminaries, at the cruiserweight division than Joshua has fought at the heavyweight division, then I believe the Joshua supporters are going to be shocked by what happens if Joshua tries to fight faster than he usually does. His defense is going to slip. Things are going to fall off the wagon. Right? Let me say, that I'll be astonished, astonished, if Usyk gets hit with anything while standing right in front of Joshua. Because I don't think Usyk's going to be right in front of Joshua. I think he's going to be over here. Now here's the problem with fighting a southpaw. Let's say Joshua decides he's going to throw left hooks. One second. Of course, my delivery man would come in the middle of a video. Well, let's say Joshua's going to throw left hooks. Right? Usyk can have his non-dominant hand. Just line it up. If a southpaw's over here on your left side, and if your best punch is the left hook, Usyk can block the left hook. Understand, when Usyk's over here, he knows he's not going to get hit with the right hand. He's going to have Joshua turning. Joshua defensive. If Joshua throws the left hook, Usyk can block it with his non-dominant right hand. And guess what? Then you're looking at a Tony Bellew situation, aren't you? Left hand, what's Joshua going to do? Let me tell you what, too. Rummy boldly says, and he might be right, that Usyk is Joshua's most advanced opponent since Vladimir Klitschko. Well, what I want people to realize is Joshua gets undressed, not lucky punched, but knocked down several times, multiple times, in the first Andy Ruiz fight. When Andy starts throwing combinations, I want people to look at Joshua's defense. Folks, you and I know that's a misnomer. When Andy starts throwing combinations deep in the pocket after hurting Anthony Joshua, there's close to no defense. Joshua's like this. There's no real game. He can't grab Andy. Right? He doesn't have a defensive construct where he turtles. Right? George Foreman. I want people to watch him. 
Foreman was in some shootouts. Right? Foreman's fighting Jerry Cooney. They're actually trading. Foreman's fighting Dwight Cowie, right? Foreman's been in some shootouts. You'll notice that when Foreman got stunned or Foreman got hit, Foreman Tommy Morrison, Foreman had, had this to go to. Foreman could hide himself. Right, folks, Joshua doesn't have that level of defense. Joshua's getting shelled. He's defenseless. The Andy Ruiz fight is the fight to look at. So now he's fighting a guy with hand speed. Rummy has films of Usyk against Joe Joyce, who I believe would give AJ a very difficult fight. Right? Because Joyce has an excellent jab. Right? Because Joyce actually has a decent defensive construct. Well, folks, Usyk against Joe Joyce is just simply too fast. You're dealing with hand speed. Between the two guys, if I asked you who has better defense, I'm guessing 90% of you would say Alexander Usyk. If I said who has better hand speed, I believe 90% of you would say Usyk. I'll give Joshua credit on episodic hand speed, right? He's fast in knocking down Kubrat Pulev with that one-two, right? That right hand is here trigger after that jab, right? But that's not the kind of hand speed we're talking about with Usyk. Usyk can throw combinations. In the Gassiev fight, Usyk would hit Gassiev, then would be over here. Usyk fights much faster than Anthony Joshua. So unless Joshua gets out of his comfort zone and decides to smother the angles like Derek Chisora did, literally run up to the guy, right, like an American football player, run up to the guy, try to shoulder him into the ropes, try to be up on his chest, Unless Joshua can fight that fight style, and he's not comfortable doing so. Right? Usyk's not going to be the only slow starter in this fight. You and I know Joshua is a slow starter. Right? Unless Joshua changes his game, he's in for a tough match against a master. Right? So I want people here in the comment section to tell us the fight where Joshua is leading with straight right hands. Right? If you don't feel Joshua has a tell, if you feel that Joshua can lead with straight right hands against a mobile opponent who isn't jumping in the pocket like Alexander Povetkin, but who is circling the pocket, who isn't allowing anything other than a temporary pocket to form. Tell us about it in the comment section of this video. Again, the uh, video that impressed me is Rummy's Corner, right? I would encourage you to look at other films by Rummy. Rummy also goes back through boxing history. So he'll have videos on former champs, and you'll look at them and you realize, wow, this guy was a hell of a fighter, right? Let me challenge YouTube, too. For those watching that Rummy's Corner video on this fight, who looks more fluid? Who's lighter on their feet? Who has the better legs? If your answers to those questions are Usyk, then what is Joshua, who lost two fights ago, right? Three fights ago, right? The first Andy Ruiz fight. What is Joshua doing getting these ridiculous odds on the fight? Right? Ask yourself, is there anybody else in boxing who you would give 
greater than two to one odds in favor of against Alexander Usyk. Right, Joshua's talented, folks. As I've said here before, he's not Joe Lewis. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.